This is Swanson Street, and it's one of the busiest and main streets in Melbourne. But there's something unusual about it. If you try and find it on a map, it's just not there. In this video, I'm going to explain why Swanson Street was wiped off the map, and why cartographers and map makers might want to rethink their decision. Swanson Street goes back to the 1830s, right back to the start of the design of the city of Melbourne. And as you can see, it appears on the early maps of the city, in the original Hoddle Grid design. Now I'm currently located on Swanson Street at the northern end of the CBD. And I'm going to go from here all the way to the southern end and show you some of the iconic sites that are on this street for two reasons. Firstly, to show you that it really does exist and two, to show you there's so much happening on it that it probably deserves to be on a map. And it does feature some pretty iconic places, including City Baths, which is actually a swimming pool, the State Library of Victoria, Melbourne Central Station, Chinatown Archway, City Square, and I made an extra video talking about that, Melbourne Town Hall, Young and Jackson Pub, Federation Square, and probably Melbourne's most famous building of all, Flinders Street Station. And Swanston Street is the largest tramway in the entire world. If you can have a look at the map, you can just see how many different routes go down here. Basically, I think there's a very strong argument for this being on a map. Let's have a look at a couple of maps of the city. So if we start with Google Maps, you can see here where Swanston Street should be. If you zoom in enough, it does appear, but despite being one of the main streets of the city, it only appears the same size as one of these tiny arcades. And it made news when Google took it off in 2012, and here's how The Age reported it then. Melbourne Swanson Street is a shadow of its former self as far as Google is concerned, and no one can explain why. And when they asked a Google spokesperson, here's what they said. I flagged it for the Maps team for correction. You should see an update soon. Well, it's almost a decade later, and there's still no sign of Swanson Street on the Google Maps. And I did like this response from City of Melbourne, who was quick to point out that the street was in fact still there, even if its status had been diminished by Google. And if we take a look at Apple Maps, we get a very similar response. You can see the parallel streets and this big gap where Swanson Street should be. Again, if you zoom right in, it will appear, but only as a tiny street or alleyway. Now I'll show you one more. This is Open Street Map. And at this resolution, there's no street really visible at all. And in fact, you can only make out where it is due to the tram line being shown. So this is a real phenomena, and not just one glitch or one bug on one side. So what's going on here? Well, Swanson Street's changed a lot over the last 150 years. One of the biggest changes started to happen in the 1990s, when it was made partially car free. What that meant is that personal motor cars and buses and freight were only allowed in in certain spaces at certain times. But one of the biggest changes happened in 2008 when Robert Doyle was made the new Lord Mayor and his original vision was to bring cars back to Swanston Street. But instead he did a full 180 on that and instead put it out to planners to come up with a new vision and a new design for the street. And what they've come up with is basically what you can see now and I'll run you through what some of that design is. Firstly, you can see the huge distance that there is for pedestrians probably double what it would normally be. It's around eight and a half meters. We go further and you can see that it's actually a bike lane. And what there is in this part is a raised part for the tram stop. So this is an accessible tram stop, trams in the middle, bike lane, and then pedestrians on the other side. So as you can see, it's almost entirely car and vehicle free. And it's been a nearly universal positive thing for the city. As you can see, it's very busy right now. It's great for retail, for hospitality. And it's even been a case study of what good urban design looks like. But what does it mean for our maps? What the cartographers seem to be doing is weighting the roads, not by how big they are geographically or how many people use them on a given day, but their infrastructure for cars. So the more lanes they have, the bigger they'll be. So Swanson Street, a road that can now take no cars, is not seen as very big or significant. And if we go back to these other maps, it really does look like this is what's happening. For example, this map from The Age, you can see here Burke Street Mall. And this is a pedestrian mall between these two points, and as you can see, barely visible at all. And when you know what's going on, you realise that Swanson Street's far from the only place around the world where this is happening. For example, in Copenhagen, the Strogat is one of the largest pedestrian streets in Europe, used by 80,000 people per day. But if we look at it, it barely makes the map. This is true from other pedestrian malls around the world, Carnaby Street in London, or the famous Tiananmen Street in Beijing. This is Elizabeth Street, and it's just one street parallel to Swanson Street. And it's also starting to go through the process of becoming more pedestrianized. In fact, where I'm standing right now, used to be a road not long ago. So is it also going to disappear from the map? And if so, this is where it becomes a real question for cartographers. The cities are realising that 
pedestrian only areas, attract more people, they're more pleasant to be around, and they clean the air quality, and they're just nicer. So this is definitely a happening trend. Paris has just announced that the Champs-Elysees, one of the most famous avenues in the world that goes right up to the Arc de Triomphe, is becoming car free, which poses the question, will future maps of Paris not have the most famous street in the world on them? I think that maybe cartographers should rethink this and start to value places that more than just how many cars they can hold. If you enjoyed this video and after more content, I just put together a series with Griffith University. I had the great chance to talk to some of their academics and tell some stories about the domestication of cats, gene therapy and how it might be used to cure cancers, and even some more on urban design. So I'll put the link below and do go check it out. I'm Julian O'Shea, take care.